Greenlawn Elementary, New Orleans. Different grade levels mean different approaches to teaching. That is the big thing with first grade. If you can get them engaged and anticipating what's coming next, they will really perform and do well. Fifth graders kind of strike a balance for me where they have uh, a lot more independence than some of the lower grades. As much as possible, I try not to just give them the knowledge, but have them build it through discussion. But there's one dreaded constant, testing. They very much do get sick of testing. They have a formal test every Friday. First grade is the beginning of them really starting to take tests. Some of them get very anxious with testing. Testing is supposed to benefit the students as well as the teacher, though we don't always think of it both ways. I feel like during the week and when we're doing activities in class, they are much more confident and therefore they perform better. I do think that the information I get from informal assessments in a way is even more valuable than just on that Friday test. We're used to thinking about tests as a measuring tool that comes after the teaching is done. But in my brain, I know that it's a chance for them to practice what they know, but that's not generally what I'm thinking of when they actually take the tests. Anidra and Troy are going to discover that tests are opportunities for students to learn, not just for teachers to evaluate. And changing how we consider tests can improve how we use them. So the idea of retrieval practice is bringing information to mind from memory. The act of retrieval actually improves your memory understanding of the concept. Retrieval can happen during any number of classroom activities, and it has both direct and indirect benefits for learning. So a student might take a test, and then we will figure out what the student knows or what they don't know. That test would have indirectly helped learning by separating out what's known and what's not known. What's less known is the direct benefit of testing to learning. What the research shows is that simply the effect of bringing information to mind from memory, which we call retrieval practice, is going to increase learning. It's surprising to learn that that production of information is what's causing learning versus when information is presented to students. The meeting with Yana definitely changed my thinking. I really have always thought that once they've mastered a skill, they know how to do that skill, they understand every aspect of it, now we can move on. But a month from now, that might not be the same and it might be completely gone from their mind. I've recognized that happening before. I hadn't thought about routinely checking back in and quizzing them on the same skill. And experiments in retrieval practice show that the best way to refresh these skills is to make the students do the work to retrieve the information. Say we have two groups of students study the same material the same way. So this group over here is going to get an opportunity to re-study. The second group, instead of studying the same information again, are given a blank sheet of paper to write down what they remember about the topic. A test of sorts. We're used to thinking that extra studying is going to be our best route, but... The group that retrieved, even without feedback, then do better on that test because this act of retrieving information boosted their memory for what they studied. Which is kind of flipping the narrative a little bit because typically we think of studying over here and then testing as that's the end goal, that's when we're gonna see if the studying worked. Studying should actually encompass retrieval practice. So taking that diagnostic test or doing a problem of the day or doing you know fluency test that's not a check that's when the learning is actually happening it doesn't matter how they're doing it whether it's on a sheet of paper or whether it's shouting it out loud or whatever as long as they're actually retrieving the information so I'm wondering if there's a way to bring in more retrieval practice into these informal activities more individual retrieval practice specifically I began to look at things that I do already that would be considered retrieval practice. And to sometimes alter something just a little bit. Even sometimes I would wait a few days and do an exit ticket with the material that I taught at the beginning of the week. It made me kind of step back and have them first tell me everything that they knew about it. 
I would give them some paper and say, okay, tell me what you know about verbs. What do you remember about them? And having them write down or draw all the information that they could remember about the topic. The first time I did it, they looked at me like, what is she doing? Why, why is she doing this? I think sometimes they get used to me giving them the answer and then they know I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna tell them the answer first. And it's less work for them but it's also less learning, is what I'm beginning to understand. Before my interview with Yana, I often adapted my curriculum to uh, pull out some of the older skills that it called back to. We have a lot of fluency checks or daily drills that I didn't see a lot of value in because we either already mastered the skill or it just didn't seem terribly important. Since the meeting, I've been cycling more of those skills in and using them more often because my curriculum does do a really good job of actually calling back to a lot of the skills from earlier in the year. But I want you to do your very, very best. Stretch your brains. All right? No, no, it's not a test. It is to help you remember. Especially some of my higher achieving kids, I had to let them know, no, it's not a test. It's okay, I just want to know what you know. That's it. The important part of that for my first graders is that there was no right or wrong way to do it. And they felt comfortable knowing that it wasn't a test, it was just to see what they knew. What is the term for something that is home to living beings that interact with each other? There are two good answers to this question. I will accept either of them. Jeopardy is a game that I've played many times in my room as a way of reviewing a whole bunch of skills. What's going to be different today is that I'm going to make sure that every student actually writes down what they think the correct answer is before they're able to have any discussion. In the past, we've done a discussion, but then whoever gets the answer first is the person who's retrieving it, and then everybody else is just listening and being told the answer. Troy's strategy of getting fifth graders to retrieve in groups was a good one. But encouraging students, all students, to practice retrieval by answering questions when they're asked to the group would be a really great little tweak. What tends to happen is there'll be, you know, someone over here who already knows the answer and they either shout it out if they're younger or they like can't wait to answer the question, they raise their hands, and it goes very, very quickly. Where possible, I always recommend to try to give students even just 30 seconds to scribble down a key word that would be part of their answer. That little pause allows everybody an equal amount of time to at least think about it. I've noticed if I have them write down a specific thing, then they often end up doing better on that skill later on in the classroom. Every single student is going to forget something that you say over the course of the year. So I think it's incredibly important for teachers to understand, to have a little more empathy towards students when they're forgetting. I have to give students a chance to retrieve these skills and not just leave it until the very end of the year. I gave them a sheet with some addition facts and I said, solve it any way you want to. What I love about it is that some of them used strategies that we had not used for months. And just with a few tweaks, they retained that information. They felt more confident. I had one kid and he'd been struggling a lot. Um, and he looked at me and said, I understand this now. And that, those are the moments, you know, and I'm like, oh man, that's great. So we had to stop and celebrate and high five. That moment is, is the best moment ever when they finally get it. And he really, he got it.